Okay, we're back. Uh, I've closed up the other side, although the wires are not all permanently zip-tied and velcroed down. On the other side of the case, they are neatened up in here. Uh, I did relocate one of the uh, system fan from up in that corner just because I didn't like it. And like I said, if you can reach, just reroute, which is why it's always good not to commit with zip ties and things too much on the other side of this. Neatness will worry about down the road. What we have now, uh, I think, is an opportunity for us to install our CPU. That's relatively easy. There's a couple of steps you'll want to take. And what we'll do is get this box open first. And you'll see, much like a lot of the other components, the CPU is keyed. It's not quite as obvious, uh, and you could be easily overlooked. So one corner of this, well, I'll just give a quick, I guess, unboxing of this Core i7. Comes with a little sticker if you want to put that on the front of your case. But the most important thing to note when installing a CPU, make sure you have your static strap on. That little triangle on the corner of this processor is going to indicate and line up with a spot on the motherboard, which is indicated by a triangle right here. It has a latch here that oof, we'll want to release that. It's not tremendously helpful, but that that little triangle here is saying this bottom corner, as evidenced by the documentation, what we're going to do optimally, pick this up by the edges, just very gently drop it in there. That's it. Ta-da! <laughs> that is as complicated as it gets. Uh, it just sits there. We've got our corner lined up. Bottom triangle. And then we just clamp it down like this. And there you have it. CPU is installed. Let's put our heat sink bracket in next. And then we'll still have, well, hold the phone. Is our heat sink gonna be in the way of this? So this, uh, this is a heat sink for, for your solid state hard drives. So let's pop this out. Cause this is gonna be, no, I dropped the screw. It comes with a nice heat sink. Oh, wow. Oops, stick that right on there. Now that our CPU is in, I think we're going to put the hard drive in next because it's sitting almost underneath this heat sink practically. Just pop that out of there. Try to handle it by the edges. And does it have a little lock there? Yeah, it does. What is that? It's got a little lock, so just make sure you orient your lock out of the way here. Now it's got a little latch. Orient the latch out of the way. I can see where this notch is to line this up with this notch here. We're just gonna push that in sideways. Now it's kind of tilting up. All we're gonna wanna do is seat that down and lock it in place. There we are. And that's locked in. It has a really nice heat sink, which has, has some thermal paste here. And uh, none of that's gonna work very well with this sticker in the way. Hmm. All right, I might pop that out, try to get the sticker off before I get it seated back in again. I'm just gonna peel that off. Boom. Get that sticker out of the way. Save it, I guess, because it'll give you the serial number and things. 
and then we're going to seat that back in. It's got some thermal thermal paste on the back, and we want to line this up carefully. I think that was a good idea, just because the processor heatsink is going to be sitting right above all this. Looking forward to getting into this. This is pretty slick. Let's just do a quick unboxing here. Opening this thing up, you have a nice bag of hardware with brackets and things, which we'll get into in a minute. It came with thermal paste. Uh, I also have some Arctic Silver here, which I purchased separately. Uh, but if you aren't fussy, I've used oh, different thermal pastes in the past. And if you're not, uh, again, if you're not driving maximum overclock performance, it probably doesn't matter. You can save yourself the seven or eight bucks on some thermal paste or more, depending, uh, uh, because this comes with a nice tube of thermal paste. However, uh, like I said, I'll, I'll probably use this since I bought it. The thing I noticed the most about this, man, this heat sink is pretty massive. Uh, and one of the things I liked about this is these are these are all solid copper tubes running up through here. Uh, and then it's got a fan that will attach on here. But the nice thing is the fan goes on after, uh, which will help us. But you can see this is such a beast. Just want to make sure I've got enough room in my case before we get too far on along here. I am going to just make it just barely. But uh, that thing is beefy. This is going to sit on top of the CPU with that thermal paste, kind of helping uh, temperature kind of move through here so that there's a nice connection between the processor and the copper pipes. The heat will sort of dissipate in here like a typical kind of radiator. And then the fan is going to blow that way across pushing cold air from the outside, through the case, through the fan, out the back, and we're gonna have a nice straight front to back line of airflow. And if, the other thing, I guess, if I'm unboxing is it comes with a addressable RGB fan. Again, you'll wanna pay attention. Intake is always on this side. Exhaust is always that way. You can tell, because that's how it goes. Put that aside for now. Let's open our bag of hardware here. So what we have are some brackets. These bent ones are for Intel. These are clips to mount to the fan. These straight ones are for AMD chips, so we won't be needing those. It actually says AMD right on it. Chuck that over here. And then this. goes on the other side of the motherboard and we're going to screw into that from the other side and we have some screws to put it all together these will be used to screw the heatsink onto the brackets i'm pretty sure i had that right i'm just going to flip that upside down get this one started and then that's it. And then we're gonna flip this over and dry fit it one more time. Flip it around, dry fit real quick. Just kind of dry test fitting to make sure all these posts are lining up with the hole. Now that we have our brackets installed and roughly spaced to the holes on our motherboard. Uh, this bracket also is adjustable. So these will these will slide. And they have a little less uh, leeway in them. So they kind of click in place. So now that I know that is happy with my motherboard, now that I know that that's the spacing that works with the holes on my motherboard, I'm gonna 
verify that that spacing is going to make a nice sandwich here because that's pretty much how this is going to go. This is going to go on the back, this is going to go on the front with some thermal paste, and we're going to make a sandwich. It has a little plastic here. I'm not just going to stick to the back of this bracket. Pull that off. That sits nicely. And now you can see down in here, we actually have threads where there was once holes. I'm just going to confirm that that's going to drop on there without hitting anything. Oh, man. That is right on top of that heat sink. But am I going to have clearance? I think I am. Let me just double check my heat sink. There's a heat sink right here, and there's the bottom of this, and there is just the most tiniest bit of space in there. But I think... I'm gonna just get my whole face in there and just make sure this this isn't gonna sit uh, crooked because of that heat sink. There's a heat sink right down here. And you can see that our CPU heat sink surpasses it. There is a little space here, enough to get my finger under there, so that's okay. Also, you can see here's the heat sink for our SSD in this slot, so. And there, there's enough space here. I can probably get two fingers in here. I could have manipulated this, potentially, uh, but it would have been a little trickier. So good that we mounted this first, just to get that out of the way, because this does, this does hang over quite a bit. Uh, all right, so next up is going to be some thermal paste, and we'll get this thing screwed in. Nice shiny copper. Under here. Now, this is where things get interesting. You are going to get all kinds of theories about thermal paste and how it should be spread, how much, how thick, all these kinds of things. And everybody's, it's a lot of the talk about spreading it on the CPU itself. Some people say just put a dot. Some people say and then it will spread when you smush it down. Some people spread it ahead of time. Uh, it's, it's, it's really up to you. <clears throat> you don't need a ton, you don't need a giant mountain because that's gonna ooze everywhere when you make a, it's like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or something. But you are gonna want to put it down. And there's enough here Or if you go overboard, uh, or if you need to clear it and start again, you can do that. So this is when having a little spatula is helpful. Just use that razor and just cut myself a little spatula to help me smooth that. I tried to make this nice and straight for smoothing, but it's really just a piece of plastic. You can see really what I'm going for here is a nice even coat. Not globby, splotchy, or anything. Uh, the great thing about having something like a piece of plastic straight, you can kind of come across the surface and pick up any extra that you think might end up spilling over the edge. You don't want too much. Like I can see I've got a high spot here. I'm just going to take some of this in. These screws will bottom out and be snug. So you can tighten those up pretty well. There's a little spring there to protect, keep some tension. I do have some nice clearance here. Clearance above that heat sink. Uh, this is on there good. I don't see tons of uh, thermal paste oozing everywhere, so I think I did an all right job there. Then next we'll want to orient our fan, but let's think this through before we do that. So the fan's gonna go here, like this. I'm gonna show you what I'm checking for so that you can do the same when you're doing this. What I'm checking for is clearance on my RAM. Now, on this motherboard, it wants you to use slots. Boy, if you would be able to see that. Those say DIM 1A, DIM 2A, DIM 1B, DIM 2B. And on this motherboard, 
and I don't know why on earth. It's counterintuitive. There's probably an explanation. But it wants you to use slot 2 before you use slot 1. Don't know, don't know why. Don't ask. That is true. I checked the documentation. So my chips are going to be sitting in... My RAM chips are going to be sitting here, which is DIM 2B. And skip this one. And then go to DIM 2A. So actually... I'll have plenty of room. I'll, it would probably just barely clear a RAM stick here if you don't have big heat sinks. But I think I'm fortunate that I'm only going with two, two sticks of RAM currently in this setup. What these do is they just loop in here on the other side, of course, and then they just pull. They're just bendy, and they just pull in here and clip around the heatsink. Uh, they give you four probably if you wanted to do some kind of double-sided situation if you were putting a fan on the other side of this. Where I've got one here and a big one here, I don't think I'm going to need that. So, uh, I'm just going to pull this on this side gently now because we are sitting on top of the processor here. There. And just like that, our fan is in place. I said these are the G Skill Rip Jaw DDR fives. These two are keyed to fit in the notch, and I'm just gonna figure that orientation out before I try to put them in there. Looks like they go this way. Pull these clips out. In the slots that you're going into and then you just push them right straight down. A good thing to watch out for when you're orienting these if you can't see is they shouldn't be rocking. They should be relatively flat. It shouldn't be like a seesaw type of situation. They should be it should feel pretty even on both sides before you push and don't push on one corner. Don't just try to get fancy and push in the middle. I would recommend nice even pressure on both sides of the chip at the same time when you're seating these. That way you get a nice connection. The clips on the sides will flip up and seat into notches. And hold those and lock those in tight. And there you have it. Wow. Okay. Connecting up some of these other pieces here. Uh, and we're going to be darn near ready to just hit the power button and see what happens.